All right, Les. Well, uh, it sounds like you had uh, quite a difficult trip home from the conference. And one thing you did not mention when we talked before, I had no idea you were an expert in hurting cats. Oh, my goodness. You trying to put together some of these dinners that we went to. It was amazing. But boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, I did not envy you whatsoever. Well, it wasn't worth the points they give you for organizing something like that. But no, it was uh, it was fine. I the 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 challenge is, is there there was there there's always somebody who wants to help or wants to do something or this and that or, or wants to change something. And it's like when you have it dialed in, it's like you really don't want extra help. You really don't want to change and stuff like that. So but but it, it all worked out great. And uh, in fact, I am. I have volunteered to be a part of the uh, Citizen Science Foundation as far as just helping. And so for next year, and I, I, it's such such a worthy cause. I'm just I'm I'm all in. I told I volunteered for Dave. He said, "Yeah, go talk to Sharon. She could use the help." Um, so and, and I didn't realize that Dave and Sharon were married. I mean, you know, different yeah. last names and all this. And I didn't know so. That yeah, so I talked to Sharon. She was, oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm all in. I'm gonna help them some with money, not a lot, because I don't have you know old. I I call myself an old retired disabled military veteran on a pension, you know. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna help out some with. I, I'm I've got a fundraising thing underway right now on the proper human diet community and Dr. Barry's community. I can tell you about. But I'm going to help them with fundraising. Uh, I'm I've already talk to them and what we may do is do rodizio uh grill next year do it both nights but have it planned out in advance get people to sign up in advance and, and maybe get 40 50 60 people a night and wow. and go back to that place because as you know it was wonderful it was wonderful yeah that was a great dinner i was sure to go leave them a rating and review and i even met one of the servers who lived in a city that i lived in in brazil so that was quite special to no be able kidding to to be able to talk to her about living there, which is quite cool. Uh, That's great. Yeah, and I, I, I could just see your military background kind of shine through as you took point on that and really got everything organized. So thank you very much for doing that. I, sure. I didn't know that you were like kind of more formally volunteering, which is a great segue to ask you the question, like what you thought of the conference. You must have been pretty impressed with how the conference is run if you're willing to already be volunteering for the next one. I was totally blown away. I was totally impressed. I mean, there were so many MDs and PhDs, not that titles matter, but the thing that signifies to me is the people that were talking had a baseline of expertise that enabled them to give those talks. And and I'm putting aside for a minute the citizen scientist portion where they had the first timers that got to talk, because that was excellent also. also. Uh, but talking about the speeches that the MDs and the PhDs gave and stuff like that, I was crazy. I, I took over 800 pictures. Um, wow. of, I took a picture of every slide that was put up for the two days and I recorded everything. I recorded Dr. Barry's speech. I've got Dr. Barry's speech now publicized on my website and uh -huh. and uh got that up it came out really good except i had the i had the camera the phone turned this way and then at, when he walked over to the screen i turned it this way thinking you know it'll just orient well it did except the whole rest of the presentation was sideways so it took me an hour to find an app to to <laughs> re reorient it but i did and it's up it's just things of getting started you know but it's up and running i i love the speakers um i love the interaction the one thing that I would change, and I'm going to give them this feedback, is the speakers aren't going to like this, but I believe that there should be where all of our vendors are at the back, the sponsors. I think there should be a table in between every two vendors, the sponsors, and a speaker should be at that table so that you can find them and you can go talk to them, get them to sign the books, you know, whatever it might be, because when they got off stage, sometimes it was hard finding them. I, I never tracked down Dr. Beckman and a couple of others. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really good feedback. Um, hopefully they'll take that into account. I, it was really intermittent, right? Like you could find some people some days, but yes. normally like they were surrounded by a bunch of people. Like I really wanted to meet the bazookis and I never had the chance because everybody wanted to meet the bazookis. And so I, I never got to break through on that. Um, okay, so what were some of your highlights? Like, who who really stood out as far as presenters? You've already mentioned Dr. Bickman. What who other what other presenters really stood out? 
you know, I'm horrible on names, Casey. Uh, the 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 older gen I say older gentleman. I'm 72. He's probably not as old as I am. But <laughs> the older gentleman who was the fitness guy, who who talked about uh, all of that. I I was like, wow. I, I was really blown blown away by that. And and um, Doctor Ben DeCocchio is his name. Yes, thank you. Yep. And and and, and two crazy ketos. Uh, I'd never seen them because I, I, my mind dismissed them because I'm going, I'm carnivore. You know, I don't know what I'm going to learn from ketos and, but they, I was really impressed. And so that changed my attitude, told me don't make assumptions. So yeah. um, those are the ones that really stood out. Bickman, especially uh, I'm really on a journey to understand all of this stuff because I've never had a background in this. So I got a lot out of just about all of them. And now what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to go back and take two full days, which is what we were at the conference. And I'm going to sit in front of my PC. I'm going to replay the audio and, and go through the slides. And now I'm going to take notes and I'm going to do, I call it the Cliff's Notes version. I, I do a lot of Cliff's Notes version publishing where I'll take a really meaty, topic or, or meaty paper or two or three research papers and boil it down to two or three of my pages, what I call dumb it down so that even less can understand it and then summarize it and give it out to people. So I want to do that with every single speech that was made while we were there. Yeah, that's a great idea. Can you time travel back to when I was in high school and do that for me then? I probably would have passed a few more book reports that I faked my way through. <laughs> that's the truth. I, I wish I would have done something like this when I was in chemistry. I barely got out of chemistry with my life <laughs> when I was in college. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. I will comment like with with um, Dr. Bickman, his presentation was 45 minutes, which I think that was the longest one that was done. And, right. and he just presented on the East Coast all about insulin as well. And I got to watch some of those discussions. And if, if I'm a presenter and I know I'm in one region of the country, I am fairly confident that I could recycle that presentation and do the same thing on the West Coast. Sure. Nobody would really know the difference unless an sure. expert was traveling to all of them. What impressed me the most about Dr. Bickman was not only was that presentation completely different and new and something different than I had seen, but you really got to appreciate his ability as a professor teaching college students, competing with them and Instagram. And he yeah. was so dynamic and everybody, you know, following along in this fairly technical presentation, we all understood fairly well and we held our attention the whole time. He was so dynamic. I really appreciated that about him. Yeah, that's, that, that's really cool. Um, I've seen him and Dr. Barry interviewed him a few weeks ago and I said, man, I want to see him at the conference. And I, I got his book and I was going through his book and I didn't get him to sign the book because I could never find him. So anyway, no yeah. big deal. No big yeah. deal. There you go. We, we I also had my, a special. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I had my first uh, DEXA scan done Monday. I'd never ah. done it before and I got it done Monday and I was thrilled about that. Things came out good, but, but go back. That's not about the good. conference. So keep going. Oh, that's awesome. No, that's great. Um, I just did a DEX scan recently as well. Um, th th a Saturday morning was pretty special because we had that panel of the three cardiologists me mediated by Dave Feldman. What, what did you think of that? That was an hour and a half asking questions back and forth. And I wouldn't say it turned into a bait, but there was definitely differences of opinions. Uh, yeah, my initial thought is we need an extra microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had to steal a microphone from one of the panel yep. the audience when they ask questions, but, but, um, I really enjoyed that because you could tell there was some differences in opinions on that panel, but, but the panel, they conducted themselves very professionally, very well. And rather than saying, you know, I disagree with that. It's this and that they'd go, I understand what so-and-so was saying. And, uh, my thought is, and they'd give you a little different spin or twist or some, or, or a counterpoint without calling it a counterpoint. And if you were paying attention, you'd go, oh, okay, he said this. And now he said this, which is about 60% the same, but there's about 40% difference. Yep. Really enjoyed that panel. I think they should do that next year as well. What about yeah, you? I agree. I agree. It was the same kind of thing. I try to approach those things and 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 when people have different opinions, I I try in my head to make both of them true. Like what he's saying is true in a context. What he's saying is true in a context. I I I don't understand you know what it's like to actually practice medicine in particular like 
recommend statins. And so one of the arguments right. that was for prescribing statins in certain situations was like the, the number needed to treat. How many people do you need to treat with a statin to see some benefit? I thought that number was in the 200s. And the one guy that was a little bit more pro statin was saying that it's, it's, it's actually a lot better than that. It's one in every 24. And the point that I made to the people that were sitting next to me is like, okay, what if I go up to him? I ask him for a hundred bucks so I can go out to one of the gambling tables and find a bet that I can make that's one in 24. Would he be willing to take that bet or not? And just with, um, you know, Dr. Ali bringing up all the side effects and all the neuro damaging things that happen when you take a statin to some people, it's a really, it's an interesting consideration to make before you take those medications. Yes. Uh, you know what? A, a, a great parallel. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a on a detox program right now where I'm taking turmeric twice a day, I'm taking a bromelain once a day, and I'm taking a natokinase twice a day to get rid of the spike protein from COVID in my that I know is in my body. And there's no downside. It's like all of these are over the counter. They're all readily available. Other than I've been told, oh well, you might get some um, oxalates from the from the turmeric, but I don't have an sure. issue with that. There is no people go, why are you taking it? You don't know for sure you have the spike protein. I said, because I can do this three to six months. There's no downside to taking any of these three things. And the upside is I know I can rid my body of that. That's way different than a statin and what you were pointing out. And yeah. as you said, going to the casino, would you be willing to do this? It's like that's an excellent, excellent parallel because uh you know, like I said, there's there's no downside to some things, but some things could have a huge downside depending on you and your reaction and everything else. So that that's a great point, Casey. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I, I thought it was interesting. The discussion was great. I hope they do that again next year. Um, and so, OK, so we're going to have you back on and we're going to do a full episode. I, your story is so compelling and you're great to talk to. I love your energy. Um, just to kind of wrap things up here for today, again, thoughts for next year anything that you would do differently things you're looking forward to um clearly you're gonna you're gonna go back and be volunteering and participating as well so um thoughts about next year's conference yeah i uh I, i've recruited my my dexa scan company and hopefully the ceo will see this before i talk to him but they have a mobile dexa unit and I've, i i'm pretty far down the road to recruit them to come to the conference next year and make the DEXA scan available to everybody there. I think that would be a huge ad. They probably can't do it for free, but if they if I can get them to become a sponsor, maybe they do it so that uh, it's 30, 40 bucks a person, something like that, and they'd have it available uh, Thursday afternoon, all day Friday, all day Saturday, maybe half the day Sunday, something like that. I think that would be a huge ad. I, I'm looking for what can we do to build on what we learned this year and then add more for next year uh, you know, hydrostatic water testing, a dunk tank might be nice, but that's a little, but you'd have to have a mobile unit stuff. But anyway, um, I, I'm just trying to think of something that we can do that would be value add uh, a YouTube video on how the heck to, to use uh, Hoover and and make that thing work and polls. I did a poll on there that was horrible because I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. And so I, I, uh, I want to do a video that people can watch in advance when they have the app and figure out how to use it. Little things like that. So it's I, I just sent out a poll yesterday. I know supposedly the conference is closed, but I went on the Whova app, did a poll, and I just said, if there's one thing that you could do differently next year, what would it be? What would you either mm. add, change, or delete and I'm hoping to get a lot of responses from that because people are still looking at the app as they still get text or something from people. So we'll see. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Well, the good news is that I know the DEXA units do show up at some of these other conferences, and I know they are quite successful when they do. So that's oh, at least good, good news. Um, the formerly known as KetoCon, now known as Hack Your Health. I just got an email yesterday that said that DEXA, uh, the mobile DEXA unit is coming back this year. It was there last year, and I believe they were pretty busy the entire time. So that's at least hopeful, and hopefully it's a benefit to DEXA. I know it's a benefit to the people that are attending the conference. And I think that's a great idea to get feedback to Dave and all the organizers of this event of things they could modify or change or add or subtract. So sure. um, that's all wonderful. Like I said, Les, really looking forward to having a full conversation with you so we can deep dive into your story. We can get more of your wisdom. But thank you so much for for um, attending. It was so great to meet you in person and, and hear your story and share some wonderful dinners with you. So thank you so much. 
Same here, Casey, and I'm still kicking ass after 70. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs>